funding level of 78% of the land valuation. Although investment returns are po positive as noted by Peter over the, over the period, deficits, deficits have significantly increased due to reduction in gold yields. The whole fund future thirds rate has increased from a baseline position of 11.6% at the previous valuation to 13.3% despite an average whole fund cost saving of 1.8% from the introduction of the new scheme. The rate increase has also been driven by the fall in gold yield. In recognition of the increases in pension costs and the budget constraints faced by employers, a number of agreed stabilizing measures were built in into, were built into the funding plan. Fund officers have a have engaged with employers to reach affordable contribution schedules within defined funding parameters, taking account of employers' problems and the long-term solvency of the fund. Employers have been notified of the contribution funding plan for the financial period, 1st April 2014 to 31st March 2017. The key risk identified under Section 3 is that unaffordable contributions will lead to a number of employers exiting the fund, leaving irrecoverable debt that must be met by all remaining employers. The key financial resolve implications identified under Section 7 is that the cost savings relating to the LDPS reform from the 1st of April 2014 will vary between employers depending upon the demographic profile of the workforce. Recommendation that members notify SSS and the completion of the actuary evaluation report. Thank you, Chair. Take any questions? No questions? So happy to. Could I just ask about the under 7.3 in the second paragraph, the dialogue that's taken place between officers, employers, and some actuarial modeling? Has that assisted the process in terms of trying to reach some kind of agreement or compromise with the employers on any potential rising employer contracts? Yes, it has, because as part of the fund strategy, we were aware of the increase in the pension costs and the budgetary constraints faced by employers. So as part of our SSS, we were built into that some stabilising measures where we will allow employers to save up their deficit contributions and their future service rates. We take in account of short-term pay restrictions that obviously employers are not giving pay increases of 4.1% as we submit to us to by the actuary. And also, we assume that a specific number of the employees have actually opted to go into the 50-50 spectrum scheme. But this is all being underpinned by a policy that we won't allow employers to reach fiscal contributions below the 2010 level that was on claim. Because obviously, we've got a be mindful that we've got to maintain the policy scheme for the long term of the fund. But it has helped. And the actuary did give us a tool for us to engage with the employers to look at the different modelling we do, the change of the assumptions and how that would impact on employee contribution rates. And so that the fund would be comfortable that the rates that we were giving them wasn't allowing them to pay the rest of them. So it has been really helpful. But it has, obviously, this valuation has resulted in a lot more work because of that additional modelling and the additional dialogue with the employers. But it has proved successful because one percent of employee rates are everybody paying and everybody's earning back to it. Chair, the clear implications of the valuation are that employers will be able to
investments during the year included deposits on four accounts and deposits with UK banks and investments in AAA money market funds. 2.7 within this report highlights that over the 12 month period, WM calculated the cash performance to be 1.9% against the benchmark of 0.4%. There is one area of non compliance with the policy during 30, 40, detailed within section 2.10. In March 2014, the RBS long-term ratings were downgraded below the limits set out within the policy, although NPF continued to maintain a small balance on the instant asset account. To clarify, on the announcement of the downgrade, significant balances were transferred to other counterparties. A small balance has been kept on the account to keep the account open, as RBS, our previous bankers, on occasion, there are receipts that are credited to this account. The account is now monitored daily to ensure any credits into the account are transferred in a timely manner. With RBS 80% owned by the government, officers consider the risk to short-term deposits minimal. 2.11 to 2.13 provides members with no safe on ICB deposits. Glitner is, is out previously reported. 81 pence to the pound was recovered and the remaining 19% is held in an Icelandic krona in an escrow account and the restrictions and currency controls remain. The heritable 14th dividend was received during 2013-14, bringing the total repayment to 94%. The, project, the projected return to creditors was previously reported to be between 86 and 90% of the claim. It is assumed no further dividends are to be received by the fund. Section 12 asks members of pensions committee to agree the treasury management annual report for 2013-14. The reason for the recommendation, as detailed in section 13, is the treasury management code requires public sector authorities to determine an annual treasury management strategy, and within that strategy, there is a requirement to formally report after the year end to those charged with governance. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so we're, we're 
happy with that. Um,
Thank you. 